Hi, this is Phil Chandler. I'm in one of my apiaries, but today's video is not going to be about beekeeping. It's going to be about a substance that is uh, well known to beekeepers that may have uses in the current, uh, how should we call it, pandemic, I guess, um, of the coronavirus. The substance in question is in this tin, which is, uh, I suppose, ironically, a, an old tobacco tin. Uh, here it is. Um, it may look like, um, well, <laughs> it might look some, like something you really don't want to consume at all. Uh, this is propolis. This is a substance made by bees from tree resins, and there is also a certain amount of wax in it. And uh, some people say they gather it, some pe people say they make it. But as you can see, if I kind of bend it around, it's a kind of soft, uh, pliable, and, and, and malleable material um, which contains uh, many different substances. Now, I'm not going to list them because I can't even remember them, um, but you can look this up uh, as you please. The word propolis comes from the Greek um, pro and polis, meaning before the city or in front of the city. In, in other words, it, it, the implication is that it has a protective quality and that's exactly how the bees use it. They use it to protect themselves against airborne pathogens. Before I go any further, I'd like to state clearly that this video is not intended to offer a cure for anything. Um, I am not a doctor, I have no medical qualifications, I have no more medical knowledge than the average person. I am not making any recommendations. Uh, in fact, I would specifically uh, warn you against doing this at home. Um, but if you choose to do so, you are doing it entirely on your own uh, cognizance. In other words, you're, 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 not, you're not taking my advice to do it, you're not taking my um, you're not uh, taking my recommendation to do it because I'm not recommending it. I'm simply offering this as an idea that people much better qualified than myself could possibly look into and possibly investigate. And the, the idea essentially is that um, building on scientific knowledge that has already been established that in, in that propolis has antiviral properties and I, down below there will be um, a, a, some quotes or some, um, some references to scientific research which demonstrates this. Okay. So there is evidence that propolis can kill viruses. Okay. Now this particular virus that we have going around at the moment is, um, infects the bronchial tubes, the, the, the lungs and the bronchia. And so when I was thinking about this and I was thinking about, well, what might be useful in this under these conditions is to use propolis um, but you've got to get it to the place where it's most effective i.e the the tissue of the um, bronchia and the only way of doing that is by inhaling it that's pretty obvious um, you can of course use it as a mouthwash this is this has been traditional for, for hundreds of years that, that propolis is um, uh, the active ingredients can be extracted from propolis by means of uh, actually even water. Some of, the, some of them are soluble in water, uh, some are soluble in alcohol. Um, but you can extract the active ingredients from propolis by various means and then use them as a mouthwash. I frequently chew, chew a piece of propolis because I like the taste and I think it's you know, potentially good to, to, to have a, a, bac a bacterially, uh, is that right, the right word, um, a bacterially healthy mouth that doesn't sound right to me but you know what I mean so right so what I'm going to do what, what I thought um, about this was well the only way I know of uh, creating a vapor from propolis is to use a device that is designed for um, making a vapor so so you know we call them vapors I think don't we <laughs> um, vapors or vaporizers it's, the, it's exactly this is the device that is used by people who want to give up smoking uh, and instead they take up puffing away at these weird smelling things that you smell everywhere these days now again i'm not suggesting in any way that vaping as such is a good idea um, i think probably inhaling 
any foreign substance into the lungs is probably uh, probably well certainly has a potential downside to it and whether it's um, something that is um, something that uh, comes from a, a, the a leaf of the uh, nicotiana plant which uh, is perfectly natural plant um, or something that comes from from the products of a beehive uh, I'm, I'm not uh, so naive as to think that there is no possible danger involved in this at all um, there are potentially toxins in all manner of plant materials, actually, including, um, well, things like rhubarb leaves, obviously containing large quantities of oxalic acid. In fact, spinach, um, I'm told that if you eat um, two kilograms of spinach, it can kill you from oxalic acid poisoning. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, so, what, well, I suppose what I'm saying is that just because it's natural doesn't mean it's good for you, okay? That's the point I was making there. Uh, however, um, propolis has a long tradition, particularly in Eastern Europe and Russia uh, and, and the Northern European countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, so on. Um, it has a reputation for being uh, a useful treatment for, for some conditions, uh, particularly mouth-related conditions and um, particularly probably bacterial uh, conditions. Viruses, of course, um, nobody had even nobody even knew what a virus was until relatively recently. I can't remember the date, so don't ask. Um, the point here here is that we now know through scientific research that they do potentially have antiviral activity. So that's what I'm hoping to exploit. Now, um, I don't have a team of research scientists. What a surprise! Working for me, um, I don't have uh, you know, you know like assistants that I can experiment on. Haha, <laughs> What a shame. Um, but I do have myself that I can experiment on. And uh, in the fine tradition of uh, scientists who uh, did the first experiments on themselves, I thought that, well, I should at least give it a try. Now, I'm not, as far as I can tell, suffering any coronavirus symptoms at the moment. I don't suppose that I'm going to stay clear of it forever. Um, I, right now, you can probably hear in my throat, I've got a slightly sore throat and my voice is just slightly hoarser than usual. So who knows, maybe I have um, got some symptoms of it. I'm, I really don't know. That's not the point. All I'm gonna do now is to demonstrate to you the, uh, the vaping technique as far as I know it. And bear in mind that I have never, literally never done this before. I mean, I have literally never done this before. So I'm completely new to vaping. Uh, it's not something I tend to take up as a hobby or, or do in, in any way frequently. Um, and, unless, of course, it turns out to be incredibly beneficial, in which case, who knows, I might. Um, so I, what I'm passing on to you now is knowledge gleaned from watching a few YouTube videos, reading a few bits and pieces here and there. Um, and so don't, take, uh, don't, don't um, think of me in any sense or form as an expert on vaping, but I'll just tell you what I understand to be um, the case with it. And, and you know, I, I'm absolutely open to uh, corrections if anybody knows better, which I'm sure many of you do. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you what I've bought and what I've prepared and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so you've seen my um, curly snake of propolis, which, I've, which I gathered yesterday from um, a healthy hive. And I, what I've done to it in the way of preparation is to heat it uh, by putting it into an old spoon, into the bowl of an old spoon, and then putting that um, over hot water, boiling water in fact, to warm it up and make it malleable. And I've just literally mushed it around in my hands and then rolled it into a snake. So it, it's now a long piece of, of like dough-like um, brown resinous material. Uh, and by the way, if anybody's suspicious, I assure you that that is what it is, okay? Any confusion with any other brown resinous material is entirely coincidental. Right, in terms of the actual vapor machine, I've chosen this one. Uh, and I'm, I would point out right now that, again, I know nothing about vaping. I chose this one purely because, uh, well, for two reasons, I think it's two. Um, number one, it's designed for vaping wax wax products rather than liquids and obviously propolis being waxy that seemed to be like a good idea this particular make and model uh, I again I, I 
previous, I knew nothing about until a couple of days ago when I ordered one um, as a result of watching a couple of YouTube videos. It seemed to have good, uh, good reviews, people were saying good things about it, it worked very well and it has, importantly, it has a large capacity and it is specifically designed for waxes. So inside the box here, oh and by the way I did pay for this, this is not a sponsored video, this is not a product promotion, uh, I'm not suggesting that this particular vapor is any better than any other vapor okay so let's get that straight from the start so here's the thing um it also comes with a um a, a little can we go where is it a little special tool uh used for kind of cutting up the wax and putting it in the in the in the device um there's very cursory instructions which actually fail to tell you how to switch it on which is kind of annoying uh, but i did work that out from the videos uh inside there's also a, a lanyard which you can uh, which you can clip on here i'm not going to do it now because it's bound to get in the way uh it's got a charging lead and uh, a spare uh this is the the kind of heart of it really it's um this is a spare coil or there's there's four coils in here it's a ceramic cup at the bottom as i understand it with four um coils uh and i believe they're embedded in quartz i'm not quite sure how they pulled that one off but uh, i'll put it a bit closer to the camera i don't know whether it's in focus or not but uh, just trust me there's four coils in there and as you can see this is pure and clean and fresh and never been used uh okay well that's the spare so why would it be um the cap of this this is where you this is where you suck on this, this end here that pops off it's magnetic Inside here, there is a screw-on cap, which I'm now going to remove. Inside the screw-on cap, you can see there's another set of four coils. This is the bit that's replaceable. Um, I guess these things burn out eventually. I don't know how long they last. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? All right, well, there's a battery, obviously, in here. It's, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably a, an 18650. Those of you who know about these things will know that that's a fairly standard battery these days in devices like this. Uh, it's got a charging port uh, it's got an air control right here this thing rotates and you can uh, it regulates the amount of air that you draw in along with the vapor uh, at the bottom there's a little cup uh, little case thing to, to put your your wax in uh, we don't need to worry about that okay so this whole thing dismantles for cleaning and so forth um, the idea is now what you do with these things apparently is you hit you press the button five times I have charged this already, but one two three four five And something's supposed to happen A, a, a light is supposed to come on there. And I'm not sure that it has I'm just going to test No, I don't think I quite got that one, two three four five. Let's do one more for luck uh, Is that working? Still not see. Oh yes, I am. Yes. Okay. I don't know whether you can see that on this camera, but those little coils are lighting up red and glowing. Uh, you, I think you probably can see that. Uh, they're glowing. So that that's that provides the heat, which uh, melts the uh, the waxy substance and vaporizes it, and then you can inhale it, obviously. So um, let me just tilt the camera slightly. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to stand up on this old log or not. Possibly not. Uh, no, it's okay. Right. So let's just clear the decks a bit. Um, uh, I've got my trusty Leatherman here. Again, I'm not promoting this product, except that I do like it a lot. Uh, it's a very useful tool, but uh, I'm not specifically uh, promoting it today. It just happens to be in my pocket and I use it for cutting things up. So here's the, here's the tool that they supply. Now, hmm. I think that's really for sort of, you know, pushing, pressing the stuff down more than cutting it. I, I probably don't, I can probably do this with my fingers. Let me just try, I can probably break off. I'm just gonna start with a small amount of this. Okay, that's maybe, I don't know, that's maybe too small. I'm just gonna drop that in. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Okay, so, so here we are, I've got two I've got two lumps of this propolis in there now, and I'm going to use the um, the special tool just to kind of even it up a bit. I'm not going to I'm not going to push it down. What I'm going to do now is just apply some heat um, because I think it needs to be melted. Oh, there we go. It's smoking already. Um, I'm just pressing the button. 
a couple of times. I, okay, I can see that it, it, the heat is melting the propolis. Well, that's no surprise. That's exactly what I expected to happen. So here we go. I'm going to put the cap on. Right, so now I've got this um, air vent thing here. I'll set it about halfway just because I don't know what else to do. Um, and I'm going to pop the magnetic cap on. And so now we are ready to vape with propolis. Okay, so as you could see, uh, this, this device has never been used before. It's brand new, it arrived this morning. Um, I've never done this before. It's not been used before. I've not smoked propolis. Oh, it's not. No, let's, let's get this right. It's not really smoking at all. It's vaping. It's turning into a vapor, which is different to actually setting something on fire, I hope. Okay, so um, what we're doing is vaporizing the propolis and I'm going to inhale it. I'm going to do this live on camera in the interest of science. Um, hmm. I hope I don't regret this. So, here we go. So I'm going to put this in my mouth. I feel slightly foolish doing this, I have to say. I'm taking a tentative gasp at it there. It's quite intense. Um, okay, I'll do it again. Okay, I wouldn't, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't something I would want to do habitually, okay, this is not something I would want to do just for the fun of it, because um, to be honest, it's not really my idea of fun. Um, <clears throat> it's not, I wouldn't say it's unpleasant um, in the sense that the, the, the flavour is okay. Can I feel it doing anything? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's going into my lungs. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to maybe open the air vent a little bit more. I'm going to rather, because what I've been doing up till now is just drawing something into my mouth and then inhaling that. I'm going to just empty my lungs and then take a, a good gasp. Okay, here we go. Well, what can I say? If there was anything living in my lungs before, I guess it's dead now. <clears throat> it fe <laughs> it um it feels it tastes like um It tastes tarry, well, kind of as you would expect propolis to taste, to be honest. It's, it, tastes, it tastes like I'm smoking tree resin. Well, <laughs> what a surprise, Phil. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of acrid. It's, uh, um, it's, uh, it feels like it's sticking to the inside of me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it feels like it's kind of applying a coat of something to my lungs, which may or may not be a good idea. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do it once more, okay? Cook. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, um, I would say not an entirely pleasurable experience. Um, not the worst thing I've ever smoked by a long way but we won't go into that. <clears throat> um, well, there you go. Um, as I said before, don't do this at home, uh, but if you do, on your own head be it. Um, I d I've no idea what it's gonna do to me. Uh, I shall 
if it does anything significant in in the in the next few hours which which i frankly doubt i'll report back but um let me just emphasize this is just an idea okay this is this is based on the traditional medicinal properties or should we say the traditionally acknowledged medicinal properties of prop propolis and the scientific research that has uh, demonstrated that it does kill viruses or can kill viruses under certain conditions um, the idea of vaping it as far as I know is mine although you know I'm sure other people have thought of this too I'm not claiming I'm not claiming um, anything unique here particularly but it seems to me that it's possible that using propolis in this way drawing it directly into the lungs as a vapor may possibly have a beneficial effect on let's just say certain pathogens and um, only time will tell if this is the case I'm, I don't know uh, I may or may or may not still get it and uh, if I do and if I if I if I show symptoms of uh, of coronavirus at any point I shall do this again and I shall keep doing it until either I suffer from serious mad, um, ill effects from this or the or the virus itself gets me one or the other we shall see um, but good luck everybody and um, I hope you uh, I hope you don't get it and if you do get it I hope you get over it quickly with no lasting side effects um, if anybody takes this idea up and runs with it and does some research into it I'd love to know how you get on um, and uh, well, I'm hoping that uh, the world will will uh, will get, get to be a better place in a few months' time, one way or another. Have a good day. See you in the next one.